It's sunset here at Grand River on the northeast coast of Trinidad. The leatherback turtle hatchlings make their way to the water's edge with the aid of dedicated conservationists. They were collected during the day in hopes of protecting and giving them a fighting chance of survival. We humans have also been predators to this now endangered species as we have cooked them in stews and soups. If this species becomes extinct, we will never see them again in our lifetime. When we started protecting turtles nearly 20 plus years ago, at the peak of the nesting season, April into May, we will encounter 25 to 30 turtles a night. Now we encounter over 500. So based on our conservation experience, I could say hypothetically they, they will be there. But when you look at leatherback in the global scenario, leatherbacks are critically endangered. The numbers are declining. It is anticipated that they may go extinct in our lifetime. And because they are not territorial, they actually live in one part of the Earth's ocean and then nesting another part. Even the best conservation actions in one place, if it is not supported by a global in, in intervention, the species can, can decline in the next 50 years and decline to the point of extinction. They are amazing creatures that can dive to 3,000 feet and can grow as much as 6 feet in length. The female navigates the oceans of 3,000 miles to lay their eggs on the same shore every year. This species of turtle can survive the colder regions as well as the Caribbean. Isn't that awesome? Fishing is really important in this community here yeah, because is most most people just depend on fishing around because we doesn't really have a lot of different things, you know. So we we try see we have a, a lot of boats. So we really depend on fishing to feed the community. So if you look first at, at the nesting beaches where they come ashore, they only nest on warm tropical beaches and they require sand that is usually clean. If you have a scenario where turtles are nesting on beaches that are polluted, the hatchlings that are incubating in the sand, they would not survive. And then you have the scenarios where leatherbacks eat jellyfish. And one of the, the challenges that leatherbacks encounter, the amount of plastics that are found in the oceans, they mistake the plastics for jellyfish. They, they attempt to ingest it and they die. So pollution is, is really a challenge. It's a challenge for the adults in the sea, open ocean, and it's a challenge for the babies when they're incubating under the sun. A poor sea turtle, you know, they, they didn't evolve with plastic bags, so they're swimming along. If you look at a, a picture of a plastic bag floating upside down in the water, it looks exactly like a jellyfish. And they don't even have good eyesight for determining like the difference between a thin film of plastic that floats exactly like a thin film of a jellyfish. So they're chomping it down and, you know, choking on it and dying. I mean, who doesn't want to prevent a sea turtle from dying. The greatest enemy to leatherbacks today, unfortunately, is man. Because um, leatherbacks don't really need human help. These animals are prehistoric. The, the, the data we have suggests that leatherbacks live when dinosaurs were here. They have the ability to live in sub-zero conditions in terms of temperatures, and they can live in very warm conditions like in the tropics. These animals have the capacity to, to survive most of the, the climatic changes that wipe out the larger terrestrial animals. They come ashore at night. They have all the adaptation to allow them to nest in the nighttime. And the babies basically incubate on their own and go back to the ocean. But man poses a threat that leatherbacks cannot really compete with. Man take the eggs, they kill the adults for food, uh, they set nets that basically curtain the nesting beaches and the animals attempt to come ashore, they get entangled and they drown. Uh, so that if you take man out of the equation, leatherbacks will be safe. But it's a sort of two-edged sword because while man is their greatest threat, man on the, on, on the other side of the coin is the greatest um, opportunity to save them early. So, so man, greatest threat and the greatest chance of surviving is also man. But there are other not-so-natural dangers of the turtles. No, we never really had was to cut flippers, right? But it had the guys and them who really had was to cut flippers off, right? Because they were tangled so bad. Yeah, but we just try, we're gonna, we try our best to, to, unloose, to untangle them. But a lot of them junk, 
lot of them. Multiple agencies, both local and international, have committed to its protection and preservation. These magnificent creatures are dependent on us to do our part. Let's protect the leatherback turtles. The turtles are part of our history. Preserve that history. Saving the leatherback turtles should be everybody's business. Save the leatherback turtles. The sea turtles are part of our culture.